Hi, my name is Katrina Nikasida and I am an assistant professor in history education at Dublin City University's Institute of Education. And I'm delighted to be here today to present the second of our provocations, which is called bringing the ethical back into inquiry-based practices. In this provocation, I argue that we need to rethink how we teach history. Recently, Nobel laureate in economics, Joseph Stiglitz, offered his assessment of what he believes is wrong in the world today. He pointed to the triple threat of inequality, climate change, and the crisis in democracy. And if anything, the global pandemic has highlighted the importance of dealing with uh, these threats. And in this era of rapid techno technological change, economic downturns, environmental catastrophes, racial injustices, and mounting political instability, we as educators must ask fundamental questions about how this can be done in our history classes. In this provocation, I am arguing that the traditional single narrative approach to teaching history um, is, is insufficient for today's students. And I am proposing an approach to teaching history which allows children to engage in critical historical inquiry of the past through using the lenses of social justice education and education for sustainable development. In recent years, historical inquiry has emerged as the signature pedagogy for teaching history. Some educators take a disciplinary perspective towards inquiry and they focus on the development of domain specific skills that are taken from the historical method while others see it as a, a way to develop civic competence and encourage democratic citizenship. These perspectives are often reflected in what we teach and how it is taught. Through the disciplined aspect of historical inquiry, students learn the power of the historical question. They learn how to use first order and second order concepts to source and evaluate historical uh, evidence and to engage with conflicting accounts uh, in order to create their own interpretation of the past. A reflective approach to inquiry, on the other hand, considers historical inquiry through a more civics framed lens uh, by examining the perspectives and values that influenced people of the past and by reflecting on the lessons that we can draw from the choices those people made. A reflective approach to inquiry uh, allows students to practice uh, arriving at reasoned ethical judgments. Barton and Levstick argue that such ju judgments, underpinned by an ethics of care, are central to particip participatory democracy. While both of these approaches differ in terms of purpose, uh, they both share an, a commitment to inquiry-based practices, the development of historical thinking skills, and the formation of evidence-based arguments. However, a frequent criticism that's often leveled at history education is that the content is disconnected and unrelated to students' lives. This provocation argues that historical inquiry, when planned and enacted using the critical lenses of so social justice education and education for sustainable development, connects history to those issues that are of interest to our students. And it also recognizes the potential of both disciplinary and reflective ways of thinking, uh, which allows our students to engage with bigger questions around the uses of history in society. Engagement with these kind of practices develops students' appreciation of social and political issues and allows them to voice their views, propose solutions, challenge accepted truths, question conflicting information and connect their findings to bigger societal issues. And in the current political and social climate, the ability to practice or participate in these kind of practices has never been more important. 
while the meaning of social justice itself is very much contested, uh, social justice education usually involves highlighting local or global social injustices for the purpose of imagining alternative futures based on a more just vision of society. Social justice pedagogy consists of teaching methodologies that are democratic and participatory and uh, practices that engage student voices and experiences and, and they're driven towards action. Teaching history from a social justice pr perspective uh, requires a deliberate and critical focus on the concepts of redistribution and recognition and on related issues of representation, power, interest, agency, change. And it does this through the content that's selected, the kinds of questions that are asked, uh, the range of sources that are used and the connections that are made. Education for Sustainable Development uh, aims to promote environmental, economic and social sustainability through pedagogic principles that are critical and student-centred. So teaching history for sustainability involves taking a global rather than a national perspective, um, as is traditionally been done in history classrooms, uh, and it also involves asking questions that challenge ideas such as progress over time or, uh, and allows children to connect the past, present and the future through critical examinations of issues such as causation. For history to be purposeful, um, inquiries into the past should begin with and be inspired by questions that are relevant to our students' lives. Rusum, for example, argues that historical learning is only truly feasible when students are confronted with an authentic need for orientation and through the interpretation of problems that are significant to the present day. So beginning with the need for the, the student to orient themselves in time, uh, he identifies the relationship between the discipline of history and the wider cultural conditions in which it's enacted. Uh, Rusin's framing of uh, history as an ongoing conversation between the past, the present and the future provides a really useful lens for us to view the teaching of history for social justice and for sustainability. While social justice and sustainability perspectives can be integrated across all content areas in a program, there are some themes that create a connection between past, present and future and provide strong opportunities for powerful history. Such themes include on, so things like uncovering the historical roots of global and local inequalities or current conflicts, interrogating systemic change and human agency over time, engaging with sensitive histories, <clears throat> understanding the roots, historic roots of systems of discrimination and oppression, engaging critically with issues of colonization, thinking critically about progress and change over time, examining humanity's relationship with the natural environment, looking at migration over time, and recognizing the impact of Eurocentrism or Western-centric perspectives on how the past is represented and understood. And as you can see from the diagram here, we've got key uh, his, uh, historical concepts and social justice concepts and education for sustainable development concepts that feed into what we call critical historical inquiry. So these, these uh, issues can be explored in the classroom through this process of critical historical inquiry. Uh, this process relates to the questions we ask, the sources we use, the evidence-based evidence arguments we create or construct, and the, the reflection that we do on what has been learned. Questions fuel history, and uh, they also determine uh, the type of inquiries that we and our students engage in. 
every inquiry begins with asking a question, uh, the type of which can dictate the form of the inquiry and the direction that it takes. For example, if we ask the question, what happened in Ireland in 1916, that might lead us towards a more disciplinary framed inquiry. Whereas if we ask a, a, more, a question like, why do we remember 1916? It carries the inquiry into a more reflective position uh, where we consider issues like celebrations, memorials, contested histories, and so on. So bringing a critical lens to the past really requires questions that relate to issues around uh, interest, power, perspective, recognition. And um, I've just got an ex some examples of the types of questions that we might ask using a social justice and a sustainability lens. So who is represented in this narrative? Who's excluded? Whose perspective is given in this source? Whose perspective is missing? Whose interests are served in this narrative and whose are not? Did everyone have the same experience? Whose experiences were different? How were they different? Why were they different? Who held the power here? Who did not? And how did that power manifest itself? How did things change? What was the impact of change in the short term, in the long term? Who influenced that change? How did they influence it? Why did they influence it? Who benefited from it? Who was disadvantaged in the short term and in the long term? And how is this connected to the present? Who is benefiting? Who is not? And how is this connected to me and to my, my community? So how do we implement this in our classrooms? Well, myself and my colleagues in DCU devised what we call the Critical Historical Inquiry Cycle to help guide teachers in planning and students in learning. And this cycle combines elements of um, his, or historical inquiry, um, teaching for social justice and sustainability education. The circles are color coded to differentiate between the five phases of inquiry, which are generating historical questions, uh, identifying sources to answer those questions, analyzing evidence, constructed, constructing evidence based arguments based on that uh, analysis, and then refre reflecting and connecting. The outer circle, or the outer section of the circles, brings together. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, uh, the critically reflective concepts and pedagogical strategies and orientations that re are relating to historical thinking, social justice education, and education for sustainable development. While the fra framework itself is fairly self explanatory, a number of points are worth noting. Uh, while teachers will generate uh, the questions and identifying, so, ident <clears throat> identify the sources at the planning stage, which are the first two circles there. Um, supporting children to generate their own questions and to begin to ask uh, questions about the sources and that they could use and, and should draw on is an integral part of uh, child-led learning that is characteristic of all of these pedagogies. Also, while the circle uh, represents a progression from one phase to the next, implementation in classrooms is generally more recursive. For example, reflection and connection can occur at any stage during the inquiry. Uh, questions can be revisited and revised. New sources can be identified and deliberation and argumentation can occur during the analysis and interpretation of evidence. In this provocation, I have argued that the traditional approaches to history education are no longer fit for purpose and that new approaches are needed. The ways in which we share the past can shape the future. And as history educators, we have a responsibility to do this in an inclusive and reflective way. I propose that we need to broaden our curricular horizons through the lenses of pedagogy such as social justice and sustainability in order to support our children in exploring 
the historic roots of present issues. By connecting the past to the present, our students can work towards a more socially just and sustainable future. Thanks for listening.